Good morning, and today I'm going to be explaining to you um, the Amalgam Tray Setup and then the actual Amalgam Tray, um, sorry, the Amalgam Procedure. And so we're going to start off by seating our patient, greeting them, having them take a seat, and then um, go over their health history. Is there any new medications that we should be concerned about? Are there old medications that they're not taking anymore? And just go ahead and um, look over that. And then when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and explain this procedure to our patient. And then if our patient has any concerns or any questions, we can go ahead and help them out with that. And then once everything is clear to them and all their questions are answered or their concerns, um, we can go ahead and give them a consent form to sign. And once that consent form is signed, we can go ahead and start setting up a procedure for the doctor. And so we're gonna go ahead and start with our basic setup, which includes our mouth mirror, our explorer, and our um, cotton forceps. So this is our mouth mirror, which is used in the mouth for um, indirect vision, indirect lighting, so the doctor can really look, depending on what tooth it is. Um, our explorer and then our cotton pliers or cotton forceps and then we're gonna make sure our doctor has enough cotton rolls um, to be used throughout the procedure and our two by two gauze so right here is our cotton rolls and then our two by two gauze that we're gonna set up for our doctor. And then also, um, we are going to have a bite block just to um, just in case the patient can't hold their mouth open for that time or her jaw gets tired easily. We have these disposable bite blocks right here, or we can um, use a regular plastic one that also looks like this. And so, um, like I said, we can either use a disposable one, which you dispose of after, or you could just use that by block and then um, go ahead and sterilize that. And then we're gonna set up our basic, um, sorry, our sections for the doctor, which includes our HBE tip, our um, saliva ejector, or a um, small suction. So this is our HVE, and then our saliva ejector, and then also our air and water syringe, which looks like this. And when that's ready, um, we can go ahead and start um, start um, giving the patient anesthetic. We're gonna start off first with our topical anesthetic that we can apply, which is a Q-tip applicator. And it looks like this. And then um, the doctor will go ahead and go in with the actual um, anesthetic syringe which looks like this. And this includes our, um, our needle, our cartridge, and then the actual sir syringe itself. And then when the patient is all numb and ready, the doctor will go ahead and start preparing the tooth either with a um, high-speed handpiece, which looks like this. And um, the burrs that the doctor will usually start off with is our 557 or 330 um, burr. So this is our high-speed handpiece, or the doctor uh, may use a slow speed with a contra angle, which looks like this. And this just helps gain entry and um, remove decay and prepare the tooth for the doctor. And then the doctor will 
um, when he while he's prepping the tooth, he'll see whether or not the tooth needs a base or a liner. And it's basically just a layer of medication. Let me go ahead and show you. It's a layer of medication that prevents sensitivity um, to the pulp, like um, cold sensitivity to the pulp. And the most, um, the most popular one, hold on, let me get this. There you go. The most popular one is Dicow, but of course um, there are many others instead of using just um, Dicow. And then also while, um, if we did have to do a basin liner, we would need to use a Dicow applicator to apply it. And this is what it looks like. The Dicow applicator, as you saw, is really not that long or big. Um, not as big as like an Explorer, it's probably about this big. And so it's easy, um, very easy to use. And the next um, appliance that I'm going to show you is our Toffelmeyer and our Mace Expand. So depending on what tooth we're going on, um, like if it's our anterior tooth, we will use a clear mylar strip so the material under is able to set or um, we can just use a regular matrix band which kind of looks like this it looks metal like this or we can use that um we can use that instead and then when we have our toffelmeyer and our matrix band secure on the tooth, we will go ahead and put in a wooden wedge. And an RDA or the doctor um, can place this. And it has like this triangular um, shape and that point, um, that wooden point is what goes into the tooth. And after, after we do this, We are gonna go ahead and start mixing our um, amalgam. So our amalgam comes in a capsule like this. And it goes into this machine called an amalgamator and it triturates it. So it mixes it, it mixes it for you. And when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and put it into an amalgam oil. Like this. And then with the amalgam carrier, which looks like this, we can go ahead and start um, packing the amalgam. And there's this little lever right here. And you put your finger under that to stabilize it. So when you're packing the amalgam, it doesn't just close because then you're not gonna pack it properly. And so you wanna make sure that you keep your finger on that so um so we can pack it properly and so the doctor can go ahead and place it and we won't need to go so much back and forth like little uh like little dabs and so after that we're going to use a condenser to pack it into pack it the amalgam into the tube this looks like this and you can see that it has um, this like little, it's kind of like flat. And so it's easy. We start off with the smaller portion and then make our way up to um, the bigger the bigger sizes. And this helps condense the material into the tooth and um, smooth it out. And you're gonna go back and forth with your doctor and use four-handed dentistry so if he needs more amalgam, you're gonna pack the amalgam while he's condensing, cause you wanna con he wants to condense in layers. You're not gonna put every all the amalgam into the tooth because it might create um, air bubbles and then it won't cure right and the filling will eventually either fall out or um, debris and food can get stuck and we don't want that at all. And so you're gonna go back and forth with your doctor until your doctor thinks that so when the doctor thinks that the amalgam is condensed enough, um, he will go ahead and move on to the burnishers. Um, there are many types that the doctor can use, depending on their preference is what they will use. Um, 
they have a football acorn or um, like an egg burnisher and some of them help smooth the amalgam and like the acorn for instance since the tip is pointed he'll use that to carve um the um he'll use that to like contour the tube to make like the lines and the indentations for it to match the adjacent teeth so these burnishers that i'm going to show you this one is the football burnisher like i said it has like this it has a little tip but um the top of it is round so it can smooth the amalgam um this acorn like the one that i told you this one's the ball one will just help uh smooth as well and then the acorn one is the one that a doctor will use to carve the anatomy into the tooth and then while he's carving that some of the amalgam is going to come off and so you're gonna have to go in there and um make sure that you're sectioning the excess amalgam and so when oh and then also there is this t-ball burnisher like i said it is also used to smooth the amalgam to contour it and after this we are going to go into our discoid cleoid carver which looks like this so this is um to help move to to help carve the occlusion and um, the anatomy as well. It's also as well, it's used for removing um, excess of the amalgam to make sure it's smooth. And then of course, to make sure that the tooth matches the contour and the height of the adjacent teeth. And after our discocleoid, we're gonna go back to, um, no, I'm sorry. We're next is our hot Holland Back Carver. And it's used to contour the occlusion as well um this one is a different one this is the hauling back carver and um when everything looks good the doctor will go ahead and um take off the top of my and the matrix band and make sure that everything looks good that the interproximal areas uh are in contact or they are um they are um carved and contoured like how he he wants it to be and when we're done we're going to use an articulating paper and paper holder and we're going to put it in the patient's mouth where the doctor worked on and the patient is going to bite down on it and so the doctor will go ahead and um, determine whether or not that the tooth um, that the amalgam is either too high or the patient has um, a perfect bite so the articulating paper and holder looks like this. And then the doctor will go in with just regular floss and um, regular floss to check the contacts in the interproximal areas. And then we're gonna see our patient up slowly make sure um, they're not dizzy from the um, anesthetic and we're going to make sure we're going to get post-operative instructions when if they do feel dizzy um, just like a little after so they don't um, forget everything of course and when we give the in, um, instructions the instructions include um, not eating or drinking anything um, too hot or too cold not eating anything until the anesthetic wears off and avoid any sorry avoid anything too hard or gummy um they just got this they just got the amalgam in their tooth so we don't want them to um we don't want them to mess it up and for it to pop out and we just want them to be as careful with it as possible until at least it fully completely um, sets. And then of course, if there's any a throbbing, um, of course you're, the patient's gonna be a little numb, but if there's really bad throbbing in the area or a sensitivity um, gets worse, the patient will go ahead and have to call the office immediately. Thank you.